Kids, sit down for Cinema Recap. Today I'm gonna tell you an incredible story. It's Palm Springs. A movie about how this dude met his children's mother. Let's suit up. Spoilers ahead. This is Palm Springs. E. what a dump. Nothing here but sand and disappointment. Wait, what's that rumbling? A little overdramatic, don't you think? But I guess anyone would be that cranky to have a kind of apocalyptic dream. Then the man proceeds to compliment the woman's leg. I mean, no arguments there. It's quite a nice leg. Also be nice to show you the quickie they do, but you know, YouTube rules and whatnot. Gotta be careful. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to get ready. I'm so sorry. It's gotta be awkward on many levels. The man fails no nut November while watching the woman say the naughty poop word repeatedly. She's doing this because apparently she lost her grandmother's precious ring. Please, I'm begging you to not bring our drama here. Ooh, she goes in hard. Man, the relationship's totally taking a massive nosedive. Guess the meat beater is named Niles, while the chick with the swearing problem is Misty. Funny, Niles, oh my god, you're hilarious. After knowing that, Niles asks her to kill him. Good first start, sounds like you guys need counseling. I guess they're also attending a wedding for some people named Tala and Abe. Later, Niles is seen relaxing on a pizza floaty on a hot summer day. A friend of his, Jerry, swims over to ask how he is. Niles just responds that it's always the same crud. Much later, the titular couple get wed, and Niles is just there to sit back, watch, and drink some pop. I mean, hashtag life goals, am I right, you guys? Don't know why some American women talk like that. The blonde gets giddy. Meanwhile, the bassist mother, I mean, the brunette right here, is just going beyond all the stops on this bottle of bubbly. I'd drink a cluster of that too if I was within earshot of that blonde speech. Of course, no one claps. Nice save, sis. Then Misty the Valley Girl introduces Sarah, the girl wasting her tuckus off with midwine. She's surprised that she has to give a speech, despite being the maid of honor. She's gonna sober up at record speed when suddenly, Niles then swipes the mic and the attention away from Sarah and Misty and oh boy, it's not gonna be good. At first the speech sounds like any deafening run-of-the-mill overseas anti-speech, but he does lead it with an incest joke. Then makes Tala look good by saying she donated her bone marrow to save her younger brother. And then he talks about the glorious characteristics of family. Then invites everyone to raise a glass. Niles is undoubtedly one smooth operator. Misty's in disbelief and everyone dances. Sarah's still drinking and rejects this dude named Randy. Then she watches Niles swindle everyone out of their drink on the dance floor. He's quite the booty shaker as well, and invites Sarah to dance. But she declines. That's not the end of the night for him though, knowing the perfume of ladies always works. Except in this case, because if Sarah didn't wear it, Tala would absolutely game end her. Some drinks arrive for him, and then he offers one to Sarah. They get acquainted. So what's your deal? You don't dance? Plantar fasciitis, actually. Huh? That means heel pain. Then this old hag swings by, and she tells how impressed she was with Niles' wedding speech. So much so that it's the best, and she looks like she's been to the wedding at Cana during Jesus' time. He thanks her, she leaves, and Sarah drops the bomb that he doesn't believe anything in that speech. He nihilistically accepts. He drops the bomb too, telling Sarah he wants to be alone with her. That is very forward of you. Actually, he just wants to get away from Sarah's dad and stepmom singing a song. Imagine how tone deaf they'd be. Of course, Sarah thinks what Misty would think, but she's at some bathroom doing some demonetizing stuff. So I'm not saying it. I'll leave it to you on what she's doing. Comment below. I can't say I ever liked her. So much for Googling love. Niles doesn't want to stop it because he really just doesn't give one about Misty anymore. What actual adulthood looks like. Booze and joyful nihilism. Then of course, after all the relatability, they hook up on some rocks. Trust me when I say this whole kinky part is not demonetizing. <laughs> That is. Sam Fisher over here then hunts down the fleeing Niles through the night desert. Roy here shoots another arrow, and this time to his tushy. Niles manages to lead Roy away into a glowing cave. Then Sarah catches up, but Roy goes into the cave and... Good morning! Well, if it isn't the same crummy morning all over again. Everything plays out the same way. Up until Sarah is aggressively questioning Niles on what happened to her. Out of confusion, she chucks some colas at Niles' way. They grab him and interrogate him. Flashback time. Apparently, she did follow Niles into the weird glowing cave, and it pulled her in. Sarah's utterly confused on what she wakes up to. She gets up only to find her family getting ready for the wedding. She tries to explain to her parents that this day already happened, and all she got was substance abuse accusations. Then she sees Niles, and now we're all caught up. Tala catches her sister harassing a guest, so she runs, then she falls. Everyone freaks out, and the dad takes Tala to the dentist. Sarah finds herself asking Niles what really happened, which at first he terribly explains, but then... Infinite time time loop situations you might have heard about. Of course, Sarah wants to stop it, so Niles just offers her a beer, but she's in dismay. Then she hatches the idea of going back to the cave. 
That was a bit of a lost cause, cause Niles follows her and gives her some booze. He says she's got a wait for it, then proclaims to be the Antichrist, which is a lie, and the cave opens up. Despite Niles' warnings, Sarah still doesn't care and goes for the cave anyway. According to Niles, the day just keeps on resetting. Premeditated deja vu. Sarah wakes up and drives somewhere, while Niles does the usual thing. He blends some shake on the bride's residence as well. Of course, back to Misty's nonsensical speech during the dinner, and Niles is seen chilling by the bar, while Sarah drives all the way to Texas. Looks like she's trying to beat the time loop by not falling asleep. Sarah's losing every ounce of her sanity. So she goes to Niles, talks to him about taking her somewhere. Of course, Misty thinks he's cheating on her, but you're cheating on me, you goof. In about 12 hours, that statement's gonna be true. Nothing like a little fresh air drive to ward away the existential nightmare, right? Well, no, cause even Niles doesn't know exactly what's happening to him. Apparently, Niles has been in bites the dust for a while now, so he gave up and just rolls with it. So we can't die. Apparently, death doesn't help as well, because Niles has tried it too many times. The day just resets if you die. But it doesn't look like it's gonna stop Sarah. And they collide with Ultra Magnus. You just have to find peace. Sarah still can't grasp the power of Bites the Dust, but it's clear that Niles wants to sit back, so he gambles with a woman in a game of darts. Suddenly, Sarah remembers the Skyrim guy who stuck an arrow into Niles' squishy flesh. Niles says Roy was a wedding guest, but the real reason he's getting hunted by him is that this story goes way back. All the way back when Niles was new to this time loop Bites the Dust thing. Niles is seen spouting metaphysical BS, then Roy is quite concerned, so he buys him a shot as well. You should said marriage is a bottomless pit. I don't remember Confucius saying that, but must be the philosopher's cut. They party like Tony Montana. And by party, I mean giggle like mongrels in the bathtub together, and then dance, and then pass out on the rocks. I wish I could just live out here forever. No, you don't. Of course, Misery loves company. So, Niles tricks Roy into going into the cave, and now he's under Bites the Dust. Flashback over. Niles says Roy lives far, so he only assaults Niles a few times a week. What Roy really wants is revenge, and there have been countless times that Niles was maimed and tortured by Roy, so that makes Niles not want to bring anyone into that time loop ever again. Sarah tells Niles that he has to face him, and he can't keep running forever. Oh, Contreras, sister. He literally has forever now. It's been so long to the point that only booze and burritos satisfy him. And the occasional one night stands, of course. Sarah gets curious about this, and apparently Niles has done it with all sorts of people, guys included. Good timing, cause it's almost Pride Month. He even did Sarah's dad. This is just a really long and complicated Lonely Island song. Niles invites her back to the wedding ceremony, but she's too pessimistic about it. Sarah then suddenly thinks that in order to get out of this time loop, they have to do something monumentally selfless. At the ceremony, Sarah steals the mic and gives it back and whispers something to Tala. Then she leaves without explaining. Suddenly, earthquake. Everybody panic. What did you say to her? Just sister stuff. Unless you're Kitsa Coatl. Sarah seems to have it all figured out and bids farewell to Sarah. Didn't work. Life is meaningless. Sounds like my kind of crowd. Except for the blonde floozy. She cries just because Niles copies her. Meh, what a baby. Niles mentions he did have a family out of town, but we're all pretty sure he won't be seeing them anytime soon. Their days become filled with all kinds of relaxation, shooting races, joy rides, and the occasional death, but no biggie. They even managed to steal a plane. And the plane stole their lives as well. Later, they go all out on a dance routine at the bar, and then run off like morons. Late for the wedding ceremony, Sarah hits on that guy that was supposed to hit on her. She says she wants to get a little kinky in the bathroom, but it's just a prank, bro. Turns out, Misty and her boy toy were still in there licking pastrami ham sandwiches, but he just freaked them all out. The next day comes and they get closer and closer. Activities like a little tattoo prank and a wedding showdown have really filled their activities. In fact, this wedding showdown is just more elaborate thanks to the bomb they planted in the cake. And the fact that Sarah's masquerading as a French Majima screams boredom. Sarah even eventually throws Niles a millionth party. What a beautiful night for camping. Sarah and Niles get all sentimental and metaphysical with a bar of chocolate. Is it wrong to assume they're high? I was married for two years. So that's a no on the high, right? Well, Sarah says she always doubted her marriage working, and it still hasn't worked. Then she asked Niles what was going on with him before he got stuck here. Niles doesn't know. He's been stuck here for so long, he can't remember. Niles being stuck here for such a long time has totally desensitized his life, feeling like he doesn't care about anything anymore. In a few moments, it's off to bed. That is, up until... Let's just get it over with. Works for me. And that was portrayed more as romantic rather than sexual. Didn't expect that from Andy Samberg. It's a beautiful morning. That's until Abe comes along to make Sarah flock off. The heck just happened? Sarah's totally out of it, even while driving. Kind of felt a little different this morning. 
guess Sarah's not the only one. Then some awkward post-coital banter haunts him. To counter this, Sarah points out a cop following him for miles. She seems to be more careless, while Niles has grown soft. Niles suspects that Roy might be the cop following him. She tells Niles to face the music, so she runs to the cop like a frightened dog. The cop asks for Niles to get out, and it's Roy. He's about to blow Niles to kingdom come, but Sarah squishes his legs. Niles thinks that's not cool, but another cop shows up. Sarah taunts the cop to taser, but he tases Niles instead. Then they get cuffed. Sarah thinks it's kind of fun, but Niles thinks otherwise. Being a source of terror is not fun, okay? Huh, this fool's terribly misinformed. So they have an argument. Then Niles calls Sarah a brat, which she doesn't take too kindly. Then it's all about the blame game on Sarah going in the cave after Niles. I followed you into that cave because I liked you. Yes, Sarah dropped the ball. Then Niles dropped the ball. Apparently, they already slept with each other over a thousand times. Niles admits that he hooked up with her before she got in the time loop and sure as hell shocked her. Next stop next day. That's one way to end the day. Niles looks for Sarah, but she isn't there. In fact, no one knows where she is. Days suddenly keep accelerating and resetting, to the point it looks like Niles is there to spend it alone. Try as he might, Sarah's nowhere to be seen. That is until he sniffs her scent on Abe's pillow. He breaks the news to the couple at the dinner, including the evidence of Sarah's perfume on Abe's pillow. They buy it. Niles expresses his disdain with everyone. Then a fight breaks out. Niles stabs him with a fork. Victory. Too bad everything resets. Once everything's a-okay, Tala's parents saying, then Niall spills his tears to Jerry. I love her. Rewind. This time, he drives to Roy's place to surrender. His bawling causes a scene, so J. Jonah Jameson has no choice but to hang out with him. He's changed a bit because he thinks his children are beautiful. Then he regrets that he won't see his kids grow up. Roy wonders about the woman who ran him over before. Then he figures something out. Roy says there's nothing worse in this time loop than being alone. Then he wants Niles out of his life for the peace of his family. As a parting gift, Niles asks Roy to kill him one last time. Jesus, so he really did sleep with her. Sarah goes to a diner and takes a crack course on quantum physics. She does this for a long time until there's your lady back. They both share their pleasantries and apologies. And then Sarah says she's found a way out. It's a theory, but the tests on the goat seem to be successful according to her. Niles is reluctant to leave because he's in love with her. Sarah wants to get out, but Niles wants to stay. Hell, he even tells her he knows about her tryst with Abe. Too bad Sarah bids farewell. Niles breaks up with that disgusting blonde. At night, Sarah finally gives her beautiful yet adamant wedding toast. Moments later, she gets a hint that one of the old bags might be stuck in there with her. Somewhere near, Niles recollects all the fun times, and then steals a truck and pretends to be Spud's son to meet his demo woman. Been living this world without you. Sarah accepts, and it's time for a creative suicide. That kiss certainly had fireworks in it. In the new reality, they crashed some neighbor's pool. Looks like the C4 did the trick. And kids, that is how I met this ending. That's it for Palm Springs. So what'd you guys think about this rewinding type of movie? Let us know in that comment section below with the hashtag cinema recap. It's Palm Springs by Lonely Island Classics, starring Andy Samberg, Kristen Milioti, and J.K. Simmons. Thanks for watching, you guys, and as always, till next time.